On July 6th of 2016, Pokemon Go is unleashed onto the public. Parks and college campuses fill with people hunting Pokemon, businesses begin advertising as Pokemon hotspots to cash in on the trend, folks racked up massive phone bills after becoming addicted. It was absolutely wild, and then there was the internet's reaction to all of this. How's it going, bros? Today we're gonna do some more Pokemon Go hunting. As when any game goes viral, you had content creators that got in on the gold rush, making everything from video guides to to parodies attempting to piggyback off of Pokemon Go's success. But what happens when Pokemon Go piggybacking makes you the target of mockery for millions of people online? Well, this is exactly what happened to Misha, better known as the Pokemon Go Kid. I play Pokemon Go every day. I play Pokemon Go. Released during the peak of Pokemon Go's viral hype, this kid's now infamous song detailing his unabashed love for Pokemon Go has been considered by some online as the most cringe song and video to ever be released. Misha found his Pokemon Go video being mocked by the likes of Leafy is here and Ricegum. Oh my god, what is this right here? What is he fucking trying to be an anime character or some shit? What is he, Naruto? But what's interesting about Misha is instead of crying and deleting his channel like you might expect a kid to do, he actually used this newfound attention to springboard his YouTube channel to great success, becoming one of the most famous kids in the Czech Republic in the process. This is the story of Misha, the I Play Pokemon Go kid. Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to Magic Spoon for sponsoring today's video. Magic Spoon satisfies that sweet cereal craving without completely sabotaging your daily nutritional goals. They've got eight flavors to choose from, and in my four pack variety box, I chose cocoa, fruity, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. The maple waffle has become a new personal favorite. And Magic Spoon doesn't just taste great, it actually makes you feel full, unlike other traditional sweet cereals. You know, most cereal, you'll down a bowl of it, and 30 minutes later, you feel like taking a nap and you're still hungry. Magic Spoon's got that protein in it that keeps you going. Each Magic Spoon cereal cereal contains 0 grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams protein, and only 4 to 5 net carbs per serving, and that's at 140 calories per bowl. They're also keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. It's made out of milk protein, that's how they're able to do all this. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that if you don't like it for any reason, they have a 100% happiness guarantee you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? You guys can click my link below and use code WAVY to get $5 off Magic Spoon's deliciously healthy cereal. Happiness guaranteed. Big shout out to them for sponsoring. Now let's get on to the story. Mikhail Florian, or Misha, a young boy from the Czech Republic, first began tinkering around with YouTube content at a very young age. He was only five at the time of his channel's creation. Initial videos on his channel featured nothing more than short skits and video effect tests. What Misha would become truly known for online, though, were his songs made in collaboration with his older brother, Ulrich, or better known as Metadon Online. With Metadon responsible for writing and instrumentals and Misha behind the mic, the two brothers found fame in the Czech-speaking corner of YouTube. This was thanks to a series of original songs with lyrics celebrating popular video games from the time. From Minecraft to League of Legends to Counter-Strike, the two knew how to get views by creating music related to games with large active online fan bases. Just make a song about a popular game. The YouTube algorithm loves this kind of shit. I mean, just look at all the songs that have been based off of Five Nights at Freddy's, for Christ's sake. Was that the bite of 87? Thanks to the success of these songs, by 2016, Misha and his brother had become minor celebrities in the Czech Republic, popular enough to even yield a bunch of child fans to come to a concert that they hosted. By April of 2016, Misha's channel had reached the 100,000 subscriber milestone, and at this point, the brothers easily had one of the biggest, if not the biggest, channels in the Czech Republic. But in the grand scheme of things, Misha and his brother were only getting started. In due time, they would go worldwide. 
Wanting to expand the reach of Misha's channel, Metadon had long toyed around with the idea of writing songs in English for Misha's channel. While a switch to English could potentially upset some of their core Czech fans, the payout could be immense as it would make the videos and music appeal to audiences in the West which Western English-speaking audiences make up the majority of YouTube viewers by a large statistic. Now, if only there was a wildly popular game sweeping the world at the time that Metadon could write a song about in English. I wonder what that game could be. The smash hit mobile game app Pokemon Go has only been out for a few days, but it's already got millions following their smartphones to the most random places. Seeing the popularity of Pokemon Go in July of 2016, Metadon decided that this would be the subject of Misha's first song written for English-speaking viewers. Trying to strike while the iron was hot, the two worked quickly on the song and music video, and by July 16th of 2016, just weeks after the game had released, I Play Pokemon Go was uploaded to Misha's YouTube channel. I'm back. I play Pokemon Go every day. I play Pokemon Go. I wanna play Pokemon all day long. All day long. It was a bit of a rocky transition to English. The lyrics were repetitive and various parts of the video were just kind of weird. But overall, the Pokemon Go song was catchy as hell and proved to be popular with children online. Speaking of children online... Throughout 2015 and 2016, there was a bit of a YouTube trend where folks would make videos reacting to and making fun of kids online for cheap clicks. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with this kid? Off the top of my head, there were guys like Leafy is here, Pyro Cynical, Rice Gum, and No Fuckers making these types of videos back in the day. And you've got a huge fucking seatbelt basically constricting his tiny little Frodo body. So he's restricted to making really retarded hand movements and occasionally changing the position of his face to resemble somewhat of a stone golem. And honestly, I don't really blame these guys too much for doing this. That was kind of the YouTube hustle at the time. If you know, you know. But anyways, YouTubers were racking in millions of views doing this sort of content, and these creators always kept an open radar scouring YouTube for the next cringe kid they could make a mockery out of for content. And unfortunately for Misha, he was next in line. Throughout the summer of 2016, a basket of reaction commentators started making videos about Misha mocking his singing ability and other intrinsic attributes. And they also took shots at his brother as well. Alright, you know, I genuinely think that this kid's parents actually hate him. Oh my god, I swear to god, I don't even know what to talk about. The song itself, the fact that it's about Pokemon Go, the fact that he's driving a car, the Minecraft logo in the corner, his fucking teeth. I play Pokemon Go every Well, damn full good and well that when I was this guy's age, I could not sing. I'm this age, which is 23, and I still can't sing. So I have no right to say you shouldn't sing. You, you shouldn't sing. No, you, you. I mean, at this point, it's not even music. You're not even trying to make it music. Like, is there no verse? Like, are you not? Is that all you're just going to say is you just play Pokemon Go every day? That's like all you say in your video. Like, please stop it. And who is this? Who are you? It looks... <laughs> It looks like he's not, he, he just doesn't want to be here. These videos would get millions of views and help morph Misha's once innocuous song into like this infamous piece of content. Because of these reaction videos, thousands incited by words of mean-spirited reactors would enter Misha's comment section and being jerks toward the kid. The cringe is killing me. What the fuck is this kid doing? My ears are bleeding. Make it stop. Misha's teeth are like stars, yellow and so far away. So yeah, after releasing the Pokemon Go song, Misha found himself pretty much being bullied by the entirety of YouTube. But at the time, it didn't really seem like he cared all that much. Why? Because he was getting a shitload of views, that's why. Misha and his brother's Pokemon Go project was going absolutely viral thanks to the drama, beating out their other videos by a long shot in terms of views. It turns out that switching to English proved to be the right call, and not only did this expose Misha to new English viewers, it inadvertently caused him to end up in the YouTube commentary drama scene. And well, Misha was down to play ball.
In August, Misha would clap back at those who made videos about him in a music video called Cyberbully Channels. In this video, he calls Rice Gum, Leafy is here, Pyrocynical, and Keemstar cancer and retards. It was a declaration of war intended to bait those who made fun of him to talk about him again. And well, everyone from Leafy to Rice Gum took the bait. Oh, Rice Gum is the retard. Rice Gum is an asshole. Oh shit, I thought he was one of those arcade things where you put tokens in, but it was just his teeth. Did this motherfucker seriously just spend 30 seconds saying cancer over and over and over and over and over again? Spoiler alert, he fucking did. Wow, that's some fucking talent right there, holy shit. Is, is this what YouTube's come to? Is, is this it? Prepubescent children having convulsions on top of their houses saying people are cancer. You are cancer! Misha would continue to make these inflammatory videos directed at reaction commentators and quote, haters, unquote, for the next year, bringing tens of millions of views to his channel in the process. Him and his brother had this down to a formula. I am the best YouTuber. I am the best. Misha would fire a shot with some ridiculous and over-the-top music video, people would see the video, cringe at it, and react to it, and in the process, this brought in millions of views back to Misha. Rinse and repeat, baby. This formula would prove successful throughout 2016 and 2017, propelling Misha to worldwide infamy and living meme legend status. But eventually, Misha's tactic of poking the commentary bears would have diminishing returns. It's impossible to hold the internet's attention forever, and eventually, people stop reacting to Misha's videos so frequently. This began a declining era in Misha's channel in terms of viewership, while simultaneously jumpstarting an era that is defined by Misha's improved singing ability and creative talent, which I'll elaborate on shortly. But first, I want to talk about something else. At this point, you gotta kind of be asking yourself, yeah, Misha's interaction with these drama channels brought him tons of fame and views, but did the bullying get to him after a while? Well, Daniel Tosh asked him this very question on an episode of Tosh.0, and this is what Misha had to say. Did you write the lyrics? I didn't write the lyrics. You My didn't brother. write Your brother wrote yeah. them. Were you ever mad at your brother because it got so popular and then there was some backlash because people were making fun of you? Mm, not really, because in the end, he's the one who made me famous. The lesson to be learned is no matter how bad life is, it's better to be famous. Sometimes not, but... No, come on. But, yeah, it's it is. <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like he was all too phased by anything anyone had to say. And this kind of makes sense in my mind, because after a while, the videos were strictly about trolling the reaction commentators. They were trying to get a reaction. They were trying to get people to talk about him. So at that point, it's like they're falling for your trap. What's there to be mad about? And you're getting millions of views in the process. Now let's talk about Misha's recent work and how he reinvented himself into a serious songwriter, singer, and composer. I'm back, and this is my new style. After his back and forths with the YouTube reactors, Misha would begin to actively start writing his own music without the direct involvement of his brother. And I'm not gonna lie, this kid's singing has improved a hundredfold. He's got talent for sure. I feel like I've had enough, but it never ends there. There's slimes I have to prepare. Yeah, from time to time, Misha would still release sillier thematic tracks like his song about COVID or his I Wanna Be a Furry video, but his direction in recent years seems to be focused on developing himself into a serious solo artist. In the summer of 2021, at the age of 14, Misha released his first studio album called Not The One. It's actually a pretty solid breakup album, like Misha was going through some shit when he wrote this, I guess, but it's a decent listen. Music videos posted to his channel from this album show Misha in stark contrast to his old Pokemon Go self. He's no longer the buck tooth kid that we once knew.
I find Misha's YouTube journey fascinating because this is really one of the rare cases where we've actually seen someone grow up on YouTube. From being five years old making skits with his brother, to dealing with the wrath of reaction commentators at age nine, and now at the age of 15 uploading music videos for his first serious album. Misha's life has essentially been documented for all to see online. Who knows what's in store for us next? All I can say is that Misha is extremely talented and the stuff that him and his brother did to get popular through the reaction commentators was simply genius to put it lightly. A living meme legend that with the help of his brother played the YouTube game for internet fame, that is the story of Misha, the I play Pokemon Go kid. Pokemon Go! So that... That was what got me famous, really. People, people really enjoyed this. People enjoyed a child going down the street going, I play Pokemon Go every day. You know what? There's a reason. It was really brilliantly cringy. And that's, that's it. it was great. Fuck chap. Fuck chap. I've had the Pokemon Go song stuck in my head for like two weeks since I started writing this video, so hopefully this is the cathartic moment where it goes away. Let me know what you guys thought about this one down below in the comments section, and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. Slap like, and I'll see you next time. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace.